I had this realization the other day that I've never built a live in-app notification system and so that's what we're doing today. I want to by the end of this video have a working notification tab where things pop up live as they come in. But how do we do this since honestly there's quite a few options out there. We could build it all ourselves using sockets and all that to get the live updates. We also have polling as an option or we use a database that provides us with real-time updates which is what we'll do in this video. We'll use Next.js 14 with Tailwind CSS for styling, Shad CNUI for the UI components, and Convex for the database and real-time updates, which is also the sponsor of this video. Basically, to get started, all we have to do is first create the Next.js app and then install Shad CNUI. If you want to skip this step, I'll leave the link in the description to the GitHub repo with the base project to get you started. Next, we need to bring in the Shad CNUI components, which we'll need. So installing button, pop over, scroll area and separator. We'll connect these later, but it's good to have them already installed. Now let's install convex by just doing bun add convex. And to get started, it's just bun convex dev. This will ask you to create an account. And once you do, it will create your development environment where the database and everything will be. This also creates a convex folder in our project, which comes with a useful readme on how to set up your queries and stuff, a TS config, and a generated folder where all of our stuff gets bundled up for us to use in a type safe way. We'll start by creating queries and mutations in a bit, but in case you're wondering why we're using convex in the first place to achieve this, it's because of their real time feature. We want when a user receives a notification, if they're using our application to receive it and see it right away on the UI. It basically looks like they use some sort of subscription based system under the hood so that whenever data changes in the database, it's able to trigger an update to any queries that are subscribed to that data so that they refetch. I was also trying to dig a bit into what kind of database they use. And from what I can see in the docs, the best I can describe it is as a relational MongoDB on steroids. It has a relational data model, but stores the data in JSON documents. Let's also set up a sample data JSON L file that we'll use to populate our database, which we can do by doing a bun convex import dash dash table notifications sample data dot json l with the data imported we can quickly take a look at the dashboard to see it there and the other thing we can do here is grab a schema generated by them based on the data so that we can put it in our folder for more type safety next we'll have to set up a client provider which after doing some digging we won't directly ever interact with it but it's being used under the hood whenever we do queries and stuff now in the layout we just have to wrap it in the provider we just created you can also have this specifically at the page level. You might also be wondering about how this would work with server components, server actions, and all of that, which they do support, but it looks like it's in beta. If you're interested, let me know and I can dive deeper into all of that. For the notifications themselves, we'll need a few things. So let's get started on the queries and mutations. To get all the notifications, we'll have get notifications. We'll need a way to get the latest notifications. And in the handler, we can use the context to access the database and query the notifications table. We can then filter out the red notifications, order them so that the latest are on top. And we can also take just the first 10 so that it doesn't get too overwhelming. Now let's also do a mutation so that we can mark individual notifications as red. And we'll call this mark notification as red. This time in the arguments, we'll have the notification ID. And in the handler, we want to grab that ID and patch it with the is red set to true. Marking all the notifications as red is a bit odd. I was looking through the docs and I don't think they support bulk patches. So we'll have a mark all notifications as red. And the first thing we have to do is query for all of the unread notifications and then for each patch it as red. So it's a bit incremental, but it works. Lastly, if I want a way for us to simulate notifications being triggered without building an entire app, we'll have a function to insert a notification with some text that was being passed in. Now that we have all the functions that we'll need, I'm going to start by adding some buttons to our page so that we can create some notifications. We'll use the use mutation hook and using the create notification we wrote coming from API notifications. Now with the three buttons on the on click, we can just call the mutation with some text being passed. In. We'll also need a header for our page. I'll keep this very simple. So we just want our logo on the left. And in my case, it's just code brew as text. And then on the right, the notifications component with the drop down, which we'll work on now. In here, it's a client component since we'll be using all the hooks. We'll have our query to get all the notifications and the two mutations to mark the notifications as red. I'll also have a flag in here to just identify if there's been any notifications. This will all be within the Shad CN popover component. We'll have a button as 
as the trigger and I also imported the Lucid React package for the icons so that we can use the bell icon. And if there's any notifications, we want to display that red dot with a count of how many notifications we have. Now for the content of the popover, we'll have a header which just says notifications. A separator also from ShadCN and then within the scroll area component. If there are no new notifications, we can just simply show some text saying that there are no unread notifications. But if there are notifications, we want to loop over them, grab the ID, text, and create it at time. Then we'll display each with the text and the created at right underneath. But on the right side, we'll have an X to mark each as red, and that will use the mark as red mutation. Below the scroll area, we'll have another section where if there's any notifications, we can mark all as red through the mark all as red mutation. I love the way this component looks, but don't give me too much credit for it. I just used V0 to generate it. And as a cherry on top, I also created this util where you can pass the create at time, and it will return a nicely formatted string of how long ago it happened. Make sure to add the notifications component to the header component and then add the header component to the layout wrapped in the provider. With all of this together, we can finally play around with what we built. So clicking any of these buttons will simulate a real notification and that instantly pops up in the tab. We can also mark them individually as red or mark all of them at once. It's all very responsive and the cool part about it is we used no state to do this. It's just all directly coming from the backend. But this was very fun to build. We got this feature set up and working really fast, which I love. Depending on your tolerance for learning new ways of doing things, you might love or hate Convex since it introduces basically a new way of thinking about things. And so would I try forcing it into an existing big project that already has a database just for a tiny feature like this? No, I wouldn't. But for me, I really like the simplicity of it all. There's no state or sockets that we have to manage manage ourselves on the front end and the back end, and it's all integrated with the database. I definitely see the promise here and we'll probably use this again. If you enjoyed this, like the video, subscribe, and 